Hi, everybody. Uh, today, I have the pleasure of introducing our presenter, Michael Viola. Having had the opportunity to speak with Michael about true colors and personality lingo, it is clear to me that his sharing this training is a passion. Michael has a long history of working with others and has learned that knowing about himself helps him to understand himself and working with others. He is currently the Associate Vice President of uh, Facilities at St. Mary's College of California and served as both an RA and a resident hall director while a student there. Throughout his career, he has used as well as taught personality lingo and true colors. So without further ado, and to get the most out of this, I'm going to stop talking. Let's welcome Michael and begin what I expect to be an exciting program. <laughs> Thank you very much, Stuart, and thank you to all of you for being here and for trusting me with your valuable time. I assure you that you'll leave here today with some really great tools um, to enhance your um, relationships, uh, whether it's with your family, your friends, um, your colleagues, um, or anybody that you come in contact with. So I'm really excited to share these tools with you. Let me get my share, my screen shared here. Can everybody see that? All right. Um, so I'd like to jump right in. Um, we'd like to launch the first poll, please. Oh, I get to participate too. Yes, everybody except me. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Right. Um, okay, I'll give it a couple more seconds. Um, if you didn't have a chance to read the materials, that's fine. All right, last chance. Oh, got a couple more coming in. Oh, ooh, looks like most people did. Okay. And here are the results. All right, so we have a lot of connector blue and a lot of planner gold, which is not surprising. Um, and it looks like half, half of the respondents are very confident. So that's excellent. Um, everyone will be confident by the end of this uh, training session. So let's start with the introduction. <clears throat> we make decisions every single day, right? Hundreds of decisions about what we're gonna wear, what we're gonna eat, um, how we're gonna interact, how we're gonna respond. And all of these um, inputs from our environment, um, we respond to them in a way uh, from our, our natural tendencies, if you will, right? So um, we're born with natural tendencies, um, a, a specific way of doing things. And so we interpret the way we're gonna respond uh, from our strengths and from our traits um, and from our own innate way of doing things. And so if I um, offer an example of a traffic light, I can assure you that for some, when they see the light turn yellow, it means I better slow down and prepare to stop. While for other styles, it means hurry up and get through the light, right? So, if we flip this, we, if we start to understand how we operate in our own style, we can notice the differences in those that we're working with or those that we interact with. And so I would offer that you've probably noticed that there are folks that communicate differently than you might in a certain circumstance, right? So for some, uh, some styles prefer to do a warm up first. They want to check in with you. They want to see how the family is doing. They might get around to asking you for that report. Can I have that report by 10 a.m., please? Would that be okay? And then they might, you know, kind of do a little bit of a wrap up. Okay, thank you. I hope you have a good day. I'll see you later at lunch. Other styles, for example, might just simply say, I want that report by 10 a.m., right? So what might take one person 10 minutes to communicate could take another person 10 seconds to communicate. What if we look at um, 
habits on the road, for example, you've probably noticed that some styles might come to a complete stop at a stop sign, while others um, might roll right through it, right? We can talk about organization. Some uh, can organize in styles or in piles, right? And they know where everything is. And others have a different style, which is everything has a place and everything is in its place. And in fact, if we take um, organization just one step further, we know that there is a proper way to hang the toilet paper. Anybody get in a fight at home or at the office about the toilet paper not being hung correctly? It really does matter uh, to some folks. So the question for today is, how do we make sense of all of these differences? Well, this is right off the press. Never um, have I um, offered this particular piece of the material before. So this is special to you, um, given our topic for today, which um, what I'm hoping to cover with you is a foundations of personality lingo so that you can leave here with some tools, a little bit of a hint of some communication style work, and then also a little bit of a spin to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so what I'm going to do is offer some things to you that are kind of a little bit outside of the personality lingo model um, that I think will work. And I'll call your attention to those by saying on topic or something related to that. So you know that I'm trying to tie this back to um, how we can be more inclusive of others, particularly in the workplace. So we're gonna make <clears throat> sense of all this because I'm calling you all, including myself to action. And we are going to be alert to clues and circumstances so that we can transform and improve our interactions. So what personality lingo is really gonna do is give you some tools uh, that you'll be able to use to notice how folks are doing things differently than you might. And you're gonna understand their preference for doing it so that you can modify your own to enhance the relationship, however that is. So what we know is, and why this is important, is that what we think we see may not really be what we see, right? Um, there are a lot of things um, going on with folks. We have our own way of doing things, but then we also may have other challenges that may either be visible or invisible um, to us. And so we need to take a moment to pause and to get curious about the motivations and the behaviors rather than getting furious. And that's the crux of what we're gonna to cover today. All right, I'm ready for poll number two. Where does your personality come from? All right, I think we got everybody. Excellent, lots of smart people in the room. It's both nature and, na uh, nature and nurture, of course. Um, so I've already alluded to the fact that we're born with certain traits and certain values and certain uh, strengths. Um, but then what happens is over time, and you recall when you uh, hopefully did the pre-assignment, I mentioned that it's, it's good to look at trying to do your personality sort, thinking back to when you were a child or very young. Because what happens is over time, we start to modify um, our behavior or our approach based on what we think is right. Um, either it could be from our teachers or our parents, our caregivers, think about peers, um, social pressure, all of that, right? So we really wanted to try to get to the bottom of who you were before everybody else started messing with your personality. And also not to be thinking so much about who you think you need to be at work or at home, but if you were your true self, right? And so that's the nature part. What is the true you? If you were left to do things your own way, how would you do it? Um, 
I'd like to put this uh, to, to a test, um, not so much a test, but hopefully you have a piece of paper or a digital pad or something that you can, uh, can write this down on. Do a quick activity. I'd like to ask you simply to write your first name, your last name, your phone number or your zip code or something. If you could just simply write that down, uh, please. And I guess if you're done and you can quickly do it, give me a thumbs up on the uh, either on your phone and your screen or a reaction. Okay, it looks like I've got a number of folks that are done. All right, so I'd like to ask for some folks if you'd like to um, share. Um, no, wait a minute, stop. <clears throat> Please uh, pick up your pen or your pencil and show me. I forgot one little piece. Okay, and now take it and put it in the other hand. Okay, and now if you would please write with your, with your other hand, right, the hand now that you're holding your implement in, please write what you wrote before, whether it was your first name and your last name, your zip code, whatever. And then kind of, let me know when you're finished, so thumbs up. Looks like folks are Getting there. This is one of those moments where I'd like to play the Jeopardy song. Um, so now I would like to invite folks um, to share how that felt when you uh, wrote what I asked you to write with your non-dominant hand. This felt wrong. Wrong. It was really awkward. Uncomfortable. Yeah, really it's like, I, yeah, and my hand just wasn't paying attention to what my brain was telling it to do. Adjustments <laughs> needed to be made. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So um, what I want for you to take away with this, um, uh, this exercise is to really, this is where the power of, part of the power of personality lingo is that we can recognize that we have our inborn traits and our natural strengths, but it doesn't mean that we can't operate out of our non-dominant styles, right? So if I know that I'm a dominant gold and I'm not strong, you know, blue is third on my style and I know that I need to brighten my blue a little bit, uh, to enhance an interaction with a, another blue or with even another style who might need blue in that moment, I know now that I can flex that blue even though it's not dominant for me. Does it feel a little funny? Yeah. Does it take more concentration? Absolutely. Um, do I have to think about it a little bit more? Maybe, right? Um, it's possible, not impossible. So that's one of the big things that I want um, for you to be able to take today is that even though what we're really trying to do is get a sense of what your dominant style is, it's really important to acknowledge that it doesn't hold you, um, you're not held to only working in that style, right? And so this is where you get um, the freedom uh, to really enhance your relationships by flexing your style, even though maybe the other person doesn't even understand personality lingo. So now we get to, to jump right into the personality styles and to really look at how um, your true north drives your day-to-day -day interactions and um, your decision-making process. Um, we'll start with the connectors. And one of the things that I love about the personality lingo model is that it is inclusive of many of the uh, various personality types. If you've taken uh, or used Myers-Briggs, you can see that referenced here. Um, you can see True Colors, you can see um, Kiersey and even uh, Hippoc Hippocrates model. 
Um, so it's really kind of an inclusive model, if you will, which I um, really love. I will be using the personality lingo connector blue interchangeably. Um, I was raised with uh, speaking colors, and so I, I usually default to that, but I'll try to remember to use the other terms as well. So with connectors, um, they're really, get this, interested in connecting with others. They're the ones that will give you the smile across the rooms, uh, make you feel welcome. Uh, they are the ones that will give you eye contact, you know, the, the smile, and they'll connect with strangers. They're very comfortable, uh, very comfortable doing that. Um, the other thing about connectors is they connect meaning with actions. So you could pause, um, they could ask you to lunch and the other person might pause for a moment and they might wonder what that hesitation was about, right? Um, so they often connect meaning um, uh, with actions. For connectors, they really are peacemakers. Conflict stresses them out, and it doesn't even need to be their own conflict. It could be a couple of folks arguing in the office um, or kids arguing at home, and they might step in and say, well, I really like what you, your idea here, and I like your idea. Maybe we could meet in the middle, and we could both win, um, or you could both win. They are very much cause-oriented, so some of the styles will kind of separate their work um, from kind of who they are and, and uh, what they want to accomplish in life as a, from a personal perspective. With blues, it's all wrapped up in one. So you'll often see them in helping professions where they can really help others um, with whatever um, it is, right? And so they're, they're just very um, cause-oriented. They are very adaptable. Um, there are some styles that are very competitive and they're you know, very independent. Um, with the connectors, they really want to win as a team, and they really want everybody to be successful. And so as a part of that, I think they're very adaptable. And I put that particular um, trait on the slide for today because I think it, um, it, it, it intersects with what we're talking about in terms of trying to make a more inclusive uh, work environment in particular. Um, so the blues will be very adaptable if, if some of the other styles can work to um, change the processes and the rules and, the, and, and those kinds of things. So look to your blues, they will follow, they will be on your side. They are guided by emotions. So it's important to know that some of the styles will um, hide their emotions. They're deep down in their core and they may never show them. Um, with the blues, you pretty well know when they're happy and when they're sad, and um, it would be really great uh, for the other styles to pay attention to that, particularly when they're sad, and check in on them. Are you doing okay? Because the blues will do that with the other styles. They have an innate ability uh, to care for others. They know when somebody's not themselves, and they will check in, and that is uncomfortable for some of the other styles, and so that's where maybe the other styles particularly the greens um, can uh, flex theirs and be open to the questions, right? Um, or the inquiries, because it all is coming from the heart with the connector. So to wrap that piece up, I've probably already said it, but it's probably not a surprise that they have a need to feel special. Um, they want to know that what they're doing is contributing to the greater good. Um, and they're not just a cog in the wheel. They're not just, you know, wasting their time doing um, these things that don't mean anything. Um, so, and on the flip side, they're really good at making others feel special. They're probably the ones that remember the birthday cards and making sure that we have a birthday cake and celebrate personal milestones, right? A lot of the other styles will look over those important um, team building, um, activities, but the blues uh, key right into it and they make sure that the rest of us don't fail. The core value for blues is relationship. What's important to blues is, you know, before they make a decision, they're really gonna sit with it for a while and think about how that decision or how they act or how they respond is gonna impact the relationship with the other person. A lot of times what you'll see with blues, two blues having lunch together is kind of one blue will say, would you like to have lunch? Sure. 
where would you like to go? I don't care wherever you'd like to go. And they kind of banter back and forth because it really doesn't matter what they're doing together as long as they're together. It's the relationship. So let's see how many uh, dominant blues we have in the group. And then um, after the poll is done, I'll ask for some volunteers to share. All right, last, last couple of seconds for polling. All right, here we go. Over half selected blue as your dominant style. Um, and then there's only 7% that have it as the least style. Um, for those either who want to share, you know, I'll, I'll open it up to share whatever. You can either share blue and you or blue that you just discovered in somebody that you know and you go, ah, now I know what I'm going to do when I leave here to work better with that person. Anybody feel free to. I'll, I'll share since relationship is so important here and I want to be part of the team. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, I, I think the thing that really spoke to me more than anything else was the, um, the cause that we're cause driven and that and we have and that it really matters what we do and so and that's me to a t one of the things that i that i could imagine for many of you in what you're doing working with people who are either in trouble or need help or whatever the case is right this really matters because it's their lives right and it matters um that you're able to extend um, you know, your expertise um, uh, to be able to help them. And so that's why I wasn't um, extremely shocked to see so many blues in the, uh, on the call today. I think I saw Joel's hand up. Joel, did you wanna say something? And I think you're on mute. Thank you. Uh, I had difficulty in uh, separating these four uh, categories. Uh, well, not really. The, there was one that I was able to call out, but three of them uh, seemed to be equal for me. Um, and uh, I think that, that was a, a, a problem if one is supposed to be able to be in one section or another. Um, thank you so much for bringing that up. Um, that is not uncommon. Um, it's a little bit more on the rare. A lot of times folks will say that they have two dominant styles. Um, for me, sometimes I'm confused about if I'm working out of my gold or my green um, because they're both very dominant. So to have three or sometimes even four is not um, totally out of the question. Um, and it's very possible um, that you've learned over the years, perhaps, how to, you're already doing what I'm suggesting uh, we start doing today, which is uh, to utilize your whole spectrum. Um, really, we're not trying to box you into any one um, style, but to try to get a sense of, is there one that's more dominant? Um, a lot of times it's easy to figure out what's most dominant and what's least dominant. And then it's usually the, the inner two. Sometimes folks have a hard time um, sorting out. Um, but rest assured, you're okay um, with three dominant styles. Anybody else want to share about blue? I guess. I should say that I'm a hyper connector. I, um, I'm, I'm the son of two blues. And I wander around the world trying to make connections. Uh, it can be traveling, uh, it can be work, it can be friendships, always looking for the connection.
that could be frustrating when others aren't open to that, right? It is. Um, so other styles pay attention. Um, so with the blues, we can bring out the best in them, obviously by accepting them, being honest with them and having that authenticity. Don't try to pull the wool over their eyes because they're gonna know it. Communicate with them, being understood and, and having some equality is very important to the blues. Um, sometimes we can bring out the worst in blues or we can not really honor our blues um, by leaving them out um, by using them. And what I say, what I mean about that is that I've mentioned to you that relationship is important to blues. And so because of that, they oftentimes have a hard time saying no, because they really don't want to damage that relationship. And so probably you all, um, you know, half of the group here maybe is experiencing this where you say yes, yes, yes. And then you find that you're putting your own needs um, to the second or the third to the back burner because you're taking care of everybody else. So the other styles would do well to remember not to um, take advantage of blues because we know they're gonna say yes. Um, so that's all I'll say about connectors. All right, so moving on to our planners. So the planner golds obviously like to plan and surprises are not their favorite. They like to know what's gonna happen and when it's gonna happen. So if you think about sometimes, you know, there might be a significant other or a colleague that thinks, oh, I'll surprise so-and-so and take them out to lunch or take them out to dinner. For a planner, they might not like that surprise because they're gonna to wanna to wear the right thing and think about the menu and what they might choose to have and really kind of build up uh, to get um, excited about that, you know, um, event. So sometimes surprises and change can be a challenge for um, our, our goals. They love structure. Um, some of the styles obviously like a little bit more flexibility, but goals like the structure. Agendas, they wanna know what's gonna happen, how many minutes are we gonna talk about this, what's next, right? So that they can plan, they know what's coming. They are traditional and I would add for this, um, maybe conservative too, um, in the context of on topic that um, when things are tried and true, why change them, right? It's always been done this way, why are we changing? And so for goals, it's not that they can't change, they just need time. They need to be able to, to understand what the change is and then kind of fit it into their structure so that it works for them. So it's not that they won't change, um, just gonna have to work with them a little bit. They rely on rules and they set the rules, right? They are the ones that write the etiquette books. And they are the ones that decide that it's okay, you know, to have your feet on furniture or not, right? So you break the rules, you're in trouble. With them, um, it's usually black or white, yes or no, right or wrong. Um, there's not a lot of gray area, particularly with, with the goals. They put work before play. Some of the styles, um, the movers, for example, will play and work at the same time. And the greens think of their work as play, um, but the golds will put their work before their play. And so they're gonna get all of that done uh, before they go out and have a good time. Sometimes, sometimes you'll see um, what the golds is, they'll be in their, their office trying to work on something and there'll be other folks hanging out in the office, maybe down the hall, having a good time laughing and they might get up and slam their door. Um, or give you a, you know, a scowling face because it's like, we're not here to play, we're here to work, right? And so um, one of the ways that we think about our planners is that they have a solid gold work ethic. Um, they get the gold star usually. Um, so just keep that in mind if you get, you know, um, if you get caught up in that, you'll understand a little bit of where they're coming from. Sense of justice isn't normally one of the traits that I would put for a planner, but for our topic today, I think it's important for us to recognize that 
I think for the Golds, they're very much um, for justice for all. But I think we need to remember that there are going to be stuck in the traditional structure relies on rules um, thinking about that. So uh, when I was thinking about how do we uh, how do we make an environment more inclusive, and I'm thinking about maybe what you do, I'm thinking of the courtroom, right? How that is very structured, right? So how do we change that and make that more inclusive? Well, one of the ways is you're going to have to change the policies and the procedures and the rules because goals hate it when you make exceptions to the rule. So what we've got to do is figure out how to change the structure, modify the structure and allow for other things um, so that they can be comfortable and they can adapt, right? Because that's how I think they are going to um, kind of work through, work through that, that change. For goals, their core responsibility is, or their core value is responsibility. So it doesn't mean give me more work. It means what am I supposed to do here? What is my responsibility? Is it my job to jump in and save this or to do that, right? Should I be doing this? Um, you, you can hear the language with the goals because they will say, well, should I be doing this? No, but you should be doing that. <laughs> They're very, um, they're very helpful in offering suggestions on what maybe you should be doing. And so you can hear that um, in their language. Um, so let's see if we have any dominant goals. And um, gold to be ready, or even non-golds if you want to share a gold in your life that you just realized you can understand better now. All right, everybody ready? There we go. 18%. And what's interesting is um, for the world's population, 40 to 45% of the population is gold. Um, but we have a lot in as the secondary color, so that will be um, interesting. And introversion and extroversion uh, plays a part in it, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that towards the end. Um, so it'll be interesting to see um, for some of you if you end up switching your dominant with your second color. And anybody want to share a gold aha moment? This is Heather. This is a really interesting situation because I was looking at all the colors, what have you, from the perspective of when I was younger. And I really thought, you know, like when I was younger, I was more orange and that gold was my second. But listen, I, you know, we haven't heard about orange, so maybe I'll stick with that. I don't know. Um, but right now it feels like gold is so on the mark. So it's just interesting to hear about. And it's, isn't that interesting? And you don't have to. And I, I'm only sharing five traits with you and I'm kind of throwing a little bit of extra stuff as I go. Um, but there are many traits, right, uh, that we could choose. And a lot of times we'll use 10, but for the sake of time, I cut it down a little bit. So what's interesting about it is that you don't have to connect with every single trait to be dominant in that style. Um, and it's always fun to hear about um, how, how, how much this really does fit um, for folks when they go, oh, this really is me and, and you know, really can embrace it. <laughs> Anybody else? Uh, well, this is Marjorie. And I, um, I, when you were going through the whole thing about when somebody says, oh, let's go do, go to lunch or dinner. And that just so hit me that like, oh, I got to figure out like, what am I going to wear? Where are we going? You know, just like all the details. How, it, it makes me anxious until I get that all down. And I'm so agenda oriented. Like whenever I meet somebody, I go, okay, what's on the agenda? <laughs> and, and I think um, in my field of law too, employment law, um, 
the policies are so important and that they're being followed consistently and, you know, in an equal manner. So, and just yesterday, I remember I was, ta- I was doing a meet and confer on discovery with, I'm, I'm plaintiff side and with defense counsel. And I, it was all about their insurance policy. And I was getting into the weeds because I wanted to make sure I got everything that I'm entitled to. And he just kept saying, it's not my job to interpret. I'm not an insurance guy. I don't have to figure this out. And, you know, and so I think he was definitely a gold person. (laughs) Perhaps, yes. Um, Or even a a thinker. But um, yeah, there were a couple of things uh, that you mentioned, you know, just in terms of um, when you were talking about just even a simple Im- invitation of going to lunch that you want to, you know, kind of plan things out. And it reminded me of my colleague yesterday. He's very, uh, very dominant. Um, I think he's blue green. And he sat down and he's a direct report and he sat down for a one on one and he said, oh, my gosh, let's talk about vacation time. And I said, OK, you know, and he told me what he wants. And he says, my wife she sent me a 20 page thing and I you know the whole itinerary for a two week vacation and I said yeah and and his bottom line was just tell me what days I need to take off you know he's just along for the ride but she had everything detailed um, for that entire trip where they were going to go where they were going to stay where they were going to have lunch you know everything every detail and so when you're going to go backpacking or you're going to go on a safari make sure you invite those goals because they're going to have everything you need in that backpack. Things that others will forget, the goals will remember. So you also hit uh, Marjorie, I believe I heard you say consistency. And that's one of the things that's really important to goals and what I was referring to and not making exceptions to every rule. If you're making a lot of exceptions, it's time to change the rule. So consistency is important, doing the right thing, being dependable and having order. Um, Chaos and confusion, of course, brings out the worst in our goals. Um, Surprises, lack of closure and waste. It could be wasting their time or wasting resources. Let's, you know, um, let's be careful with our resources around our goals. And I see Natasha, you have your hand up. Yeah. I mean, I have a little, <clears throat> sorry, planner in me, but not, it's not my dominant, but I did recognize that my stepmother-in-law and my father-in-law are super planners and they, it gets worse and worse, like as they get older. <laughs> and so, you know, I notice if, if we're just like a little bit late because of traffic or there's some, something goes not quite as planned, you know, they really have like a breakdown almost. How do you deal with someone who's that sort of super planner and somewhat rigid in that, in that way? And they get thrown off, you know, and they kind of want to blame you maybe sometimes for, for not being a planner as well, you know, and not accounting for the traffic and leaving like five hours early instead of, you know, two and a half or something like that. Yeah. Well, I would say love them and embrace them and their style and and do what you can do to, um, you know, kind of help, um, whether it's helping them plan even further a bit ahead, as you've suggested. Um, I I had offered a a True Colors uh, to students not too long ago, student leaders, and this kind of traffic thing came up. I mean, I don't know how to tell you um, how to advise getting around the Bay Area anymore. It's just terrible everywhere you go at all times of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, but we were laughing about the GPS thing. And, um, you know, one of the students said, oh, uh, I think he was orange. I really love looking at the GPS because I really want to try to beat it, right? I want to get mm. there faster than the GPS. And it was like, I was one of those moments for me where I was thinking, well, for my style, I want to know, is it accurate? Mm, mm. Uh, so you know I don't know just continue to work with them and and try to to offer some suggestions maybe um, now that you understand their style and what's important and why they're getting upset maybe you can Mm -hmm. help them maybe I should I I I can share this with them and talk about 
you know, like our styles are more like this, your style is more like this. We have to be more mindful of each other's styles and, and, and be more understanding of, of each other. That's exactly right. That is, you just nailed the whole point of our conversation today. Mm -hmm. This is great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. I think we should move on to greens. Um, so the greens are thinkers, which should not be a surprise. Uh, so what happens with greens is they often get lost in their heads thinking. Um, so you could be having a conversation with them and you might use a word incorrectly. And before you know it, they're off thinking about, oh, she used the wrong word or he used the wrong phrase. I'll bet he meant to say, right? And so that thinker might be missing the conversation that's happening in the moment. Um, you could interrupt them while they're working on something or thinking about something and they might uh, look up at you and you might think that they're listening and they're hearing the words, but they're not listening, right? There's a difference between hearing and listening and really being present. And so it's important to keep in mind with thinkers that they're not doing that on purpose. It's just that whatever thoughts they were working on, whatever problem they were solving, they haven't solved it yet and they're still working on it in their head. So um, they're not trying to be disrespectful. It's just the way that they're wired. Um, so um, having that kind of as a, a point of reference will help you um, either come back at a time when they can be more focused or maybe just, you know, I'll ask you to be respectful, but maybe get their attention in, the, in another way. The motto for greens is should be able to. And so they really thrive on being able to solve what others can't solve. If you think about the medical and the space advances and all of those, uh, you know, great modern world that we enjoy today, that's really a lot of it has to do with our greens. They don't settle for the status quo. They're always looking to make things better. And so if you tell them that something can't be done, they're going to work on it and work on it and work on it until they get it. Um, and so when I was mentioning that the greens, um, see their work as play, a lot of times they get so wrapped up in it that they forget to have lunch and they look at the clock and they, they remember, oh, it's eight o'clock, I better go home to the family, right? So they really get engrossed with solving those problems. Tell them something can't be done and they will figure out how to do it. One of my favorites is they ask why. They ask a lot of questions, they're very inquisitive. And for some that can feel like they're being interrogated. But really what they're trying to do is understand what is your problem and how can I help? I can't help you if I don't ask questions about the problem. Um, so perhaps uh, you've been in situations with greens where they've just asked question after question after question after question. And you think, well, wait a minute, I'm not on trial here. I'm not on the stand. Why are you doing that to me? They're trying to understand so they can help you. And what happens with the greens is they often jump over the empathy. Remember our blues? are going to be very empathetic um, and then help. The greens kind of forget about the ep empathy and they jump, jump right into problem solving. And so um, for our greens, it's, um, I you know, will offer to you if you can remember some of the blue, brighten your blue a little bit when you're helping others, that will go a long way. And then the other styles, remember that it's not intentional. It's how they're wired to, you know, oh, a problem? I got it. I'm going to jump right in. So they are calm and collected. Um, so I, I mentioned to you that the, the blues, we very much know how they're feeling and they're gonna, they're gonna check in with us, we're gonna check in with them, um, it's very open. With the greens, they're the style that keeps their emotions deep in their core. They usually don't let you know when they're happy or sad or mad, it's hard to tell. They also have a kind of a, a very sarcastic sense of humor um, that might be very wry. So it's really, they don't have a lot of facial expressions, right? So even this afternoon when I said, I don't even remember if I said I was excited to be here and thank you for, for being here with me today. Um, there might've been some skeptics in the room saying, well, he doesn't look very excited. Um, but I can tell you that inside I'm very excited, even though my face might not be showing it. So on topic, I think 
calm and collected what I was thinking about um, for, you know, kind of helping others and um, be more included, or maybe even witnessing something going on. And we, you know, people treat people poorly all the time. And sometimes some folks will jump in, other times they won't. And one of the things that I was thinking about with our greens is when we think about them as they're having their emotions so deep and being in their head thinking that while some of the other styles, maybe the blue would come to an aid because it's important that, to them to be empathetic and to show empathy. And maybe the oranges because they're quick act, you know, they can act on a moment's notice for the greens they might still be in their head processing what they're experiencing. And they're not even having figured out how they're gonna act or respond. They're trying to figure it out. Um, and so if you encounter you know, an experience like that, it, it might just be that they're stuck and they're not really sure what to do because they haven't solved the problem. They haven't figured out how to come to the aid or how to change that situation or whatever the case is. The greens are very logical. Um, so they're, they're a lot like golds in terms of, you know, one, two, three, four, five, right? Everything goes in an order. Um, and they'll follow rules if they make sense. So when I think about our driving example, the golds are gonna stop at the stop sign at the four-way stop regardless. 24 hours a day, five seconds wait, and they'll go through, right? For the greens, I'll do it if it makes sense. There's nobody in the intersection, why should I stop, right? Um, so they're very much uh, logical individuals and they will oftentimes even try to manage their personal relationships in a logical way. So when we even think about our blues and our greens, if your um, you know, significant other um, is a blue or a green and you're trying to connect, um, just think a head to heart kind of a relationship. And you can see why maybe sometimes uh, you're not connecting at the same uh, level. And so I think also important for greens is that they're independent and private. And so I bring this up again on topic because they're not likely going to share a lot of personal information with you. And if they do, and I'm thinking in the work setting, if they do choose to share some information with you, it means they have a high level of confidence in you and they really they feel like they can trust you. Um, but it's not common for them to share a lot. And so um, again, thinking about um, our blues and some of our other styles who might be craving that interaction, if they're not giving it to you, that's probably why. Um, so we can think about asking again, our greens to brighten that blue just a little bit at times to be open uh, to connect with others. And then also for our connectors to to understand why maybe the greens aren't as open as you'd like them to be. But if you work on it and we work together, um, there, there is a, a way for us to work through it, I think. So the core value for greens is competency, whether it's their own or the competency of others, right? Who is most competent to do this thing we've got to do? Is it me or is it someone else? One of the things that I think about uh, with greens is you've probably heard paralysis by analysis. The greens like to have a lot of information and sometimes it can take them some time to make a decision. Um, you know, we want to know, we want the best product or the best solution uh, for the best price. You know, I'm thinking about somebody who takes, you know, eight years to find a travel trailer, right? You've, at some point you've got to say, I found the right one at the right price and I'm gonna jump on it. All right. So let's see how our thinker greens fit into the spectrum. All right, last couple seconds. Anybody else? Okay. Here we go. All right, 
So it'll be interesting for me to note that about five to 10% of the population are green. Um, and so you can imagine how frustrating that might be for greens uh, to know that at least 90% of the world's population doesn't understand you <laughs> or your style, unless of course they've attended Michael's uh, presentation. Uh, so who would like to share something about green, either in yourself or somebody that you know? Um, I'm, I'm a green and I think that's, that's extremely true. I, I, I feel misunderstood. Uh, people don't understand the way that I think. Um, and yeah, sometimes, you know, people think that you're a certain way because they're judging you through their lens and they don't stop to think that, you know, it's nothing personal at all. So I, I definitely agree with you on the feeling misunderstood. Definitely. Well, I'm gonna jump in and say that something you said, Michael, resonated with me. Um, I find, I, I, I will be honest, green, I thought I was third, green was third in my lineup, but actually it's fourth, it's the least. I, I feel so frustrated when I hear you say, um, greens will just get so into a project, you know, they'll forget dinner or, you know, they're, they're just really into um, thinking and, and, you know, it takes them eight years to, to, you know, think and go online and look at the item and compare and cross check, like to me, overanalyzing. Um, and it's, it's for me, I, I would say that my husband, my, hearing this must be a green, um, because this is where all of our differences are. Um, and literally, he'll be working on projects. And I just, I don't have an understanding of how you can forget to eat. Food is so important to me. I don't understand how you could literally forget that it's time to eat a meal. And so, um, yeah, he will get really involved with projects um, and think and think and think and go back and forth, et cetera. So I, this is, this green thing is, is um, and I'm glad to hear Sabrina say that she feels misunderstood and how hard it is. I didn't know greens were not in the minority. Like you said, 90% of people are not greens. I'll have to keep that in mind and, and try to be a little bit more understanding. Very good. I, I'm a green and uh, yeah, sometimes I forget to eat. Like, <laughs> like it just, I go into something and I just keep working and super like in the flow and focus that I go, oh my God, wait, why do I feel like I'm going to pass out? Oh my God, I forgot to eat like two hours. It's already like three, you know, or something. Um, and also in it makes sense that it's a small minority because I haven't really met so many people who are like this. Um, my husband's actually like this. So, so then it further made me feel like, wait, how come other people aren't like this? <laughs> because I'm literally with someone who's like this. And uh, yeah, and I, and I love to know a lot about everything that I find interesting. So it'll, it'll be like really crazy. I'd be like, Oh, I'm watching this show on, you know, uh, like elephants. Oh, oh my God. Now I'm going to go research elephants. And now I know everything about elephants <laughs> and it's completely not pertinent to my business or, or anything like that. And Natasha, that's exactly how I am. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and also exactly how my husband is. So <laughs> I feel like <laughs> Yeah, I found, I found someone who is not going to uh, make me be emotional with them and who will accept my, oh, we're in a fight. Okay, we're going to need to think about that for a few days and I'll get back to you on my analysis. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The analysis paralysis. That's like, yeah, that's a real thing. It is. And, and I wanted to underscore um, when you talked about, you know, wanting to learn more about something, even though it's not necessarily something in your line of work, right? And mm -hmm. that is so, such a green thing. The internet is their friend because they'll be looking at something and it'll say, for more information, click here. And before you know it, they're 20 pages down the line, right? And so they have a lot of fun facts then that they can share with the rest of us um, about a lot, of, a lot of information, but they really do have a craving for knowledge. Um, and, and we'll seek. It's all a part of that why, why, why. Okay, that's interesting. Good. I'm glad that this is resonating. 
Oh, also, also, I I noticed like uh, I can do small talk, but it's only for so long. It's sort of gets really boring if we're just if it doesn't go like deeper and, and the other person is not also like really thinking hard about something and and wants to just talk about something that's very superficial it's it's sort of i get frustrated or find it kind of boring um but not not everyone is going to you know go down the deep hole of researching elephants like I will. so it's like you know it, it, you just have to roll with it sometimes I'm kind of on that topic uh I think listening is especially hard sometimes <laughs> because you're like when you said about oh you hear one thing and you're solving that problem and it's like yeah I'm listening but I'm also still gonna fix your back problems with x y and z in the meantime <laughs> That's exactly right. I know I struggle uh, with it even uh, from time to time. Um, the last thing, Natasha, that you raised, I should have written it down. I wanted to underscore. Mm, what was the last topic? Uh, I can't remember, but uh, I'll move on. But whatever it was you said, Natasha, you, were, you had underscored, I was gonna say eyes on your own paper because um, that was what I was gonna say. So you've already said it, thank you. Um, so some of the ways that we can think about bringing out the best in our greens is to have information, give them the data, give them the facts. Uh, I remembered what I was gonna say. Remember when I said that some of the styles, um, you know, work is play and play is work with greens, their work is their play. And if you try to do those social things, wedding receptions and things where they have to make that small talk, it can be very stressful for them. They only have so many fun facts to share and then they're bored, right? And that's basically what Natasha said. Um, so we're bringing out the best, give them challenges, give them some personal projects to work on. They are the ones likely to say, you know, I get this team concept and in, in, on paper, but if you give it to me, um, I could really knock this out and do it well uh, by myself. Um, the other thing to think about, you know, just I think one of the things that we learned about with the pandemic is that um, even when we think about introversion and extroversion and also our green thinkers is that it might be okay for them to do some work at home or some um, offsite work um, where they can retreat from all of that personal interaction um, so that they can can be successful in, in working the, in their style as well. So that's something um, that we can be open to in terms of our topic of, of diversity and inclusion and um, helping everybody be um, thrive at their work in their own way. Um, being right brings out the best in uh, greens. And um, then as I mentioned, um, Competency is their core value. And so they don't want to look stupid. And, and uh, so they're not going to, they're likely not going to take on anything that they don't feel that they're competent to do. And probably with greens, I would say they probably never feel 100% competent because they can always do better. Um, some of the ways that we can not honor our greens is to complain a lot. Um, we could be incompetent. We could try to micromanage them. Um, or we could create rules that block progress. Um, and then I think the final thing that I'll say about greens, um, you know, thinking about our topic at hand, which is, so we've talked a little bit about um, probably blues will be able to adapt to change. Our golds will adapt in time if we change the policies and the, the structures so that it works. With the greens, they're the ones that are gonna help with the process changes, right? We have folks, we've got a problem. How are we going to fix it? Put them to work to change the processes and start to get that settled. If you think about engineers, um, in whether it's manufacturing or industrial engineering or whatever the case is, they know how to build systems that build things. So let's get the greens to work on changing the work system, if you will. And then we'll get our movers to actually put all of our plans into action.
So our movers, oranges, <clears throat> they are highly mobile individuals and they like variety in their work, you know, so they, the, remember how the golds like their structure and, and they're really very comfortable golds doing the same thing every day. You know, at eight o'clock, I'm gonna do this. And at 8.15, I'm gonna do that. But the golds they like, or the oranges, they like variety. They want, want that change. They don't wanna be stuck at a desk all day long. Um, they wanna be part of the action. They're really good at um, um, troubleshooting and delegating tasks. They can figure out this needs to be done right now. This can wait. Um, they're really kind of jump in uh, and get it done kinds of individuals. Um, and they're quickly, they can quickly move on from setbacks. They don't usually dwell on failures. It's kind of like, okay, well, that's done. I'm going to move on and I'm going to do something else. We're going to get this done. So I've talked a little bit already about variety. Um, they just like a change in their day. They're very competitive individuals and it can be a competition, a competition, you know, amongst a colleague, but it could also be just being competitive with themselves. Um, you know, they might set up their own uh, rules for the week and say, well, I really want to get these five things done this week. And so they'll set up a competition with themselves. You could also, as their supervisor or their friend, say, I'll bet you can't get those two things done by Friday. And it's like, ooh, the orange here's a, a, a bet or, you know, uh, a dare, and they're going to take it and they're going to do it. They're also, what I'll add here is they're master negotiators. And so when they hear somebody say no, what they really hear is maybe. And so sometimes they'll even try to negotiate to get you to change that, that no to a yes or that maybe to a yes, even if they don't want it. They might not even want what they're negotiating, but that adrenaline rush, that thrill to get that no to a yes is very exciting for them. They're very spontaneous and impulsive. So now is their favorite moment. The past already happened and I can't worry about the future. I'm here in the present in the moment. And so that's one of the ways that I think they can be uh, most helpful on a team in particular is because they can jump right into whatever is happening in this moment. One of the examples I like to use um, is if I'm working at, you know, in my job as a facilities director, if I have a broken water line, who am I going to send in first? If I've got an 18 inch line dumping gallons, hundreds, thousands of gallons of water down the line uh, drain, who am I going to send in? Well, if I send my oranges in, they're going to get in there right away and get that water turned off. What are my greens doing? Well, if I send the green in, they're probably trying to understand the problem. Hmm. I wonder why that busted. Maybe if we do this thing and we do that, we can make it so that it doesn't happen again, right? Where are my goals? Well, my goals are saying, don't forget to do an incident report. Uh, make sure you have a contract for that work. Oh, by the way, do we have a budget to fix it? Right, they're doing all of those things. And my blues, I've got my blues on my customer service desk, working with the students to reassure them and to be empathetic that we understand it's an inconvenience and we're gonna get that water on as soon as we can. So it's one example where you can really kind of see the different styles at work and how they're all so important to the team and how we get things done. Oranges will push boundaries. We see it on the freeway. We see it in our relationships. We see it at work. Um, they will push the boundaries. It's kind of part of that negotiation um, until you call them out on, and then they'll, they'll kind of get back in line. So you remember where I said golds will follow the rules regardless. Our thinkers will do it if it makes logical sense. And our oranges see rules as guidelines or suggestions, right? Ah, okay. They, they would prefer that I did this, but it's not set in stone, right? And really important for movers I think is that they will give straightforward feedback and they also like to receive it um, in that way. And so sometimes it can catch other styles off guard because they will say um, what's on their mind because in many situations, they haven't necessarily had an opportunity to think about it 
um, a gold and a green will probably think about what they're going to say and then say it. Um, versus the, the mover oftentimes says it, and then when they thought about it, they might actually change their mind. Um, so sometimes that can be a little bit jarring if you are not expecting honest feedback um, because it just comes out. They do it all in one, one moment. So the core value for movers is freedom. They like the freedom to move around. They wanna have choices. They don't necessarily wanna be boxed in. I have to do this and I have to do it this way. Um, really working with um, oranges, if you refrain from micromanaging them, you'll get a lot better results. Give them the end goal and let them do it their way. Check in from time to time if you need to, but don't micromanage them. Um, So if one of the other things I think about or orange is if they don't have that freedom and they don't have options and you don't communicate with them and you don't share with them, sometimes they'll make up their own options or they'll make up their own things. Um, there's, I think I have time to tell this quick story. There's a, a story about um, a mover, uh, his spouse had asked, uh, hey, would you like to go up and spend a week in um, Tahoe with me and my family? And, and the mover was like, oh, no, you know, I, I, I can't do that. I get migraines and I'm going to get called away for work and I, all these things, right? So there's some excuses um, because they don't want to be boxed in. Oh, my God, I love your family, but to spend a week with them in a cabin, we're going to drive, right? We're going to drive up together. I can't get away kind of a thing, right? So the, the, invite, the inviter knows what's going on because he took my course and he goes, okay, I can see what's happening here. So he says, all right, how about this? You drive up to Tahoe with me and when we get there, I'll put the keys to the car in your hands. You can leave whenever you'd like to leave. If you wanna leave that night, if you wanna leave the next day, if you get called away for work, you've got the keys, you do what is most comfortable for you. How long do you think the orange mover stayed? The whole week? The whole week. Because she had the freedom to leave whenever she wanted to. It's that being, feeling boxed in to have to stay for a whole week, right? And not to have that flexibility and that freedom was very stressful. Um, and so because she had, uh, you know, had the freedom to do what she wanted to do, she didn't feel the need to escape. All right, I thought maybe there was a question coming. Let's see how many uh, movers we have. Okay, a couple more seconds, then I'll end the polling. All right. Seventeen percent. So still a decent amount. Um, about thirty percent of the population is um, orange. Interesting. Quite a few. Most of us have it at the end as our least dominant uh, style. Um, anybody wanna share their mover in them or in somebody you know or aha moment? Yeah, so uh, this is me in spades. <laughs> um, well, I was laughing when you were describing some of the things because uh, the company that I work with, we do sort of a personality assessment when people come in the door. And I've read mine, I've been with this company forever, but I've read mine and it says something at one point along the lines of, um, Heather hears no as an opportunity to create other ways of doing things. And I'm like, oh, yep, yep. So this is very much on base. <laughs> Good, I love to hear that. Anybody else? Well, just that I said before, I definitely, put green at the bottom, 
and now I'm putting orange at the bottom. I'm, I'm neither one of these. So <laughs> I feel like I'm very narrow in my scope because I'm such a blue and then a gold secondary, but I don't identify with the orange or the green. Um, and this orange for sure not, like even less than the green. And I said, I didn't identify with the green. So it's very interesting to, I don't know what that means. I, I, I don't know what that means. That I'm just too much in a box. I, I don't know. Well, and, and one of the things that I'm thinking about is, you know, sometimes we have, we brighten or we're forced to use our styles at work in a different way than we would naturally be expected to or that we would desire to. And one of the things, you know, I know nothing really about your profession other than, you know, thankfully I haven't been to court, um, other than what I've seen on TV. And so one of the things that I wonder about is, you know, uh, the greens and the paralysis by analysis, um, looking at case studies and uh, what's been done before and really digging into all of that. I mean, that seems to me like that's a pretty big task, um, depending on what you're working on. And to start and stop that, would it be out of the question, um, you know, if, if green is not your dominant style, but that's what you're expected to, you know, to do in that moment, would you find yourself at all? You know, I, I don't know if that helps or not. But. Oh yeah, oh, I, I, now when you said that, there's, I mean, that I, I cannot put something down when I'm researching something or doing a project. Um, I, I don't, I, I'll stay up all night trying to figure the issue out. I guess I didn't think about that with the greens, but yes, I, I definitely, definitely do that i don't consider that over analyzing of course i consider that. <laughs> that's being competent you're just exactly. doing what you've been asked to do <laughs> exactly i'm um, just being competent and doing my job for the client but yes yeah, so maybe i yeah so i guess i am more of a green than an orange yes and you know and the, the thing sometimes it's hard to tell um the difference between golds and greens in the sense that they both in my opinion the golds are going to pay probably a little bit more attention to the little details, but the greens are so interested in competency that when you throw um, a report down on, you know, in front of them, they will in a moment's notice say, but you've got a typo here. Would you like to fix that before you submit the final? Oh, that's so, me. <laughs> right. So I think it's probably more likely, uh, perhaps, that green is higher than orange. One of the things that I think about, you know, the orange is they're spontaneous, impulsive, and they like to take risks. If I were to say right now, who wants to go, you know, skydiving, most likely our oranges would say, yeah, I'll go. You know, um, the golds might say, well, if we plan ahead, maybe I'll go. And the blues will say, well, can we all jump together? <laughs> you know, uh, so um you have to work through, yeah, what your lineup is. And it might change, um, you know, as you learn more. Well, and I know we were talking earlier about, you know, nature and nurture and all of that. And while I, I have orange is sort of my last one, there are parts of it that I'm seeing have gotten stronger as I've gotten older. And especially, and I think this has to do with the fact that as of six months ago, my children are all financially independent. So the freedom thing is much bigger for my life right now yeah. than it was before. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's fascinating, you know. And and I'm you know we're sorry. I hope I didn't cut you off. Um, was there anything else you were going to add, Teresa? No, I was just saying it was just just fascinating, kind of seeing those changes over time and. Um, and I think part of it too is, you know, who you are spending your time with as well has an impact. Mm -hmm. and, and what your role, what your role is in that situation. Um, you know, and we're just scratching the surface really. Um, but I'm hoping that I was able to give you enough to get started today and then hopefully pique your interest to learn more. Um, this so feels like, oh, sorry, this feels like an Elon Musk kind of a person the um, or, orange. Uh, because they because he flew to space and back elon musk i don't did he fly to space was he one of, i thought he was one of the ones that went to space recently but um yeah but potentially but also think about the innovation 
Um, so he's probably also very green. Mm, mm. Yeah, I, this is Marjorie. And I was just thinking about this in terms of the whole thing with the pandemic and all the mandates, you know, like wearing a mask. And so for me as a blue and a gold, I'm like, what's the big deal? The rule is wear a mask. You follow the rules. Let's be consistent. Whereas, you know, then there's so many, all these people who they're looking at it as such an imposition on their freedom and it's tyrannical and the government is telling them what to do and they should have the right to decide, you know? And I'm just like, I don't understand that. What is the big deal here? But it is, you know, apparently, and that maybe, you know, the public health people could be benefiting from personality lingo <laughs> and taking uh, that into account in the messaging. I think everybody can benefit from personality lingo. Um, and so your point is well taken. And one of the things that, that I was thinking about when you were just saying is, yeah, for the, the movers, um, freedom is so important. They don't like the rules. They don't want to be told no, right? And even if there's good reason, they might um, feel, a, you know, that that's an object, objectionable uh, to them. And it, it's not necessarily a political thing, it's just how they're wired to operate. Um, the other thing that I was thinking about that I'll just say when I'm thinking about our topic at PAN is one of the things that we've, that we've seen, I think over the decades in our school system is that a lot of times kids, young kids in particular will be diagnosed with various things. And I'll just use ADD as one of the examples. It's very possible, you know, that the, the child has that. It's very possible that the child is simply orange. It might be that the child is having a hard time sitting uh, through school in a gold environment. And so are, is there a way that our teachers and our school system could redesign um, the curriculum or how that works? And maybe they have. It's been a few years since I've been through it. Um, you know, to, to add some different kinds of things to allow for movement in the classroom. And if they have, uh, you know, a child that's working like that, maybe that child could, you know, send the lunch slips to the, the office every morning so that he or she can get up, you know, whatever the case is. But having that awareness that every, you know, that we all have different needs and different ways of doing things just really opens up the opportunity to let everybody be successful in their own way as much as we can, right? We can't just change everything all at once, but I think that we can move in a direction where we can be more understanding and more helpful instead of just saying, nope, you're breaking the rule, you know, you're going to detention. I told you not to move, <laughs> you know, whatever the case is. And you see that I'm sure in your in your day-to-day -day work. Um, so I've talked a little bit about what brings out the worst in our oranges, being told no, stalling them, delaying them from, from reaching the goal, uh, lack of feedback and unable to use their skills, um, including them, uh, giving them opportunities to be the best and to do what they do best really will help them shine. So we are near the end here. Just bear with me for a few more minutes. Uh, one more poll. All right, this is taking a little bit longer because there's a little bit more to think about for this. So but we're getting there. All right. Get your answers locked in, everybody. Okay, I'll end the polling. Here we go. Ah, uh, very interesting. So it's almost 50-50 that some folks made some changes, so that's good. I wasn't expecting everybody to have it perfect before um, the presentation. And so 
um, it is in a lot of ways validating for why we take the time to go through each of the styles and to share stories about them, uh, because I think it helps with the understanding and being able to relate to what we're talking about. Um, still a lot of blues and golds. I would have expected um, to see more golds um, given the legal, but again, it's not surprising how many thinkers there are when we talk about how much research goes in behind the scenes for uh, right cases and all of that. So um, very interesting. Um, not so many oranges now. Uh, so it looks like, yeah. So there were just a couple of, does anybody, did anybody want to, well, maybe I better finish the last couple of slides and then I'll open it up just so we can be mindful of your time. Um, I just wanted to, to highlight that um, in some work organizations and places where we do these workshops, um, we'll make name tags or different kinds of ways, door signs or whatever. So you um, can, can show what your personality style is. And so your, con your, um, your colleagues will kind of know how to approach you if they can't figure it out um, by how you're acting, right? If they haven't, notice the clues. Um, so these are just some examples of how, how you might do it. Um, and I can certainly come to your place of employment and, and teach everybody else what you know so that you can all have it on your doors. Sure. Um, I just wanted to briefly talk a little bit about introversion and extroversion because I think that a lot of times we have a misconception about um, what it really means um, because society has said, well, Right, we've probably heard introverts are shy, right? They're not ever gonna wanna get up and speak or to defend a case or do whatever it is, right? And that's so not uh, how we think about introversion and extroversion in the context of personality lingo. So with introverts, they gather their energy, they recharge their batteries by being quiet, by being, you know, reading, maybe by journaling, um, you know, doing something just kind of one-on-one -on -one with themselves. Maybe uh, they can be in a room with a spouse, but they're each not talking, they're doing separate things, but they're together, right? With the extroverts, they get their energy uh, being with others, being active, doing things, right? The, the more they're doing, the more energy they get from that experience. Um, so when I'm thinking about introverts and what we've learned with the pandemic is, again, the whole idea that if we can allow some folks to work um, offsite um, or use Zoom or other kinds of uh, features to facilitate for them so that they don't need to be in the office for eight or 10 hours a day with all of that other commotion, they might do well um, in a more quiet um, kind of one-on-one -on -one space. Um, the other thing that's, I think, interesting is um, when we look at extroverts, they show their dominant style to the external world. Um, so I had shared the example earlier uh, before we started that Tigger is an extroverted orange. He jumps around, he's exciting, he just kind of, uh, you know, bounces around and does his thing. Well, Pooh is an introvert, introverted orange. Um, because there's no real plan. He's not, um, he or she, I, who is not um, going around trying to find honey in a planned, organized way, right? It's kind of like, oh, okay, I'll follow Christopher Robin, I'll get my head stuck in a tree, all this kind of thing. Um, so just an example um, that even though you might think that you've got it figured out based on the clues that maybe you think you see, there's still one more layer, which is to look at the introversion, extroversion. So if you're confused about your first two styles, you might wanna just take a look at that and see if that helps clarify anything for you. And that brings me to the final slide and poll, which we don't necessarily have to share, um, but it marks the end of the presentation and I can take questions and maybe I'll have some answers. And my apologies, Michael, I just got the second question. I did not get the first one in there, so. Oh, no problem. Sorry about that. And no. while people are doing that, I'm gonna stop your screen share real quick.
and here we go. I just wanted to say a thank you to all of our DEI sponsors. Uh, they're the ones who are enabling us to put these programs on, a lot of them for free. So um, huge thanks to all of you who have been supporting these programs. All right. I'll finish up the polling there. And it looks like everybody who answered said that they were interested in learning more, Michael. So um, I know we're going to be sending materials out afterwards. So yeah. um, we can include, how about we include a way for them to get in touch with you? Um, yeah, great. That would be great. Thank you. All right. Um, well, do we want to open it up to questions? Are you available for a few more minutes? Okay. Yes, I am. Great. Great. So, um, you know, feel free if you want to just unmute yourself, if you've got questions for Michael. Uh, Michael Don Sullivan, Chad Sullivan. Uh, could you give us the breakdown again in, in the uh, overall society of the different traits or colors? And then after that, perhaps you have separate information about those in the legal profession, lawyers and judges? <laughs> um, yeah, well, I, I, can, I can data mine that for you um, and, and get it to you. Um, the blues account for about 15 to 20% of the population. Okay. Um, the golds are 40 to 45%. And the, the greens are five to 10. And the balance is the orange, which is I think 30 to 35%. Hmm. Okay. And it's interesting that most seem to fall in the gold category Michael, is this worldwide? Are we looking at American numbers, North American numbers? It's world. Um, it's based on the world population. Um, so it really kind of, our innate ways of doing things seems to be consistent across the globe. It doesn't, you know, there may be some some folks studying that, um, you know, at a more micro level, but I'm not aware of that uh, data at this time. How, what's the percentage for blue again? Uh, 15 to 20. Oh, 15 to 20. Okay. So this is Marjorie. Um, this is, you know, if you have any thoughts on this, that, that based on those statistics, it looks like we're really um, conflicted as a word po world population because the two biggest groups are the planners and the non-planners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think that's a, that's a good thing, right? So the planners are, are setting the plans and then the, the non-planners are getting it done. Um, but yes, it is interesting. And so obviously you can see what the polar opposites are with the oranges and the golds and the blues and the greens, right? And you can see, um, and obviously, hopefully you noticed uh, the importance of having all of the styles and a good representation of all of the styles. Perhaps if we had some more green, uh, we would be even better um, as a society than we are today. And blue too, for that matter. I, I was just going to say, I'm really surprised to hear the low number on the blues. Really? I, I, I mean, when you, when you look at the news and when you get the cases you all get, and I mean, yeah, there aren't enough um, people taking care of each other, that's for sure. Right. Interesting. Is there... Um, do you find like individuals might have different personality types for their personal and professional lives? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think that is, is true. And it's, it's a funny question and because I think that we, we have our natural piece. And then when we put on our different hats, um, we might flex or brighten another piece, right? Um, and I think that's the real power is when you can recognize that you're doing it or you do it intentionally. Um, I'm thinking about 
the folks who have gone maybe through the military. And when you think about the military is very structured. I think a lot of those folks um, come out thinking that their goals naturally when maybe they were just trained to be. Um, and so that's a part of that, a nurture that we've been talking about um, kind of throughout the program is that um, we have our, our, our natural way, but then things happen over the course of our lives that, that may influence that. Um, so I'm not sure if I answered your question exactly. So restate it if I didn't, please. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, and I, and I think we, a lot of us do this to some extent, you kind of show a different face you know, at, at home and with your friends as, as you would um, at work, but whether your, you know, personality kind of comes through that sometimes, or maybe it's just, you see it in a, a different way. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, I think that's right. I mean, one of the examples that we often use is just being on time, um, right? Uh, for some of the styles, being on time is not in their nature. They're late all the time. And, you know, but to hold a job, you've got to be on time. You cannot be late to court, right? You're going to get in trouble if you're late to court. Um, so what do you do? You know, it's that whole thing. I plan ahead. I set my alarm clock a little bit earlier. You know, I really have to work at it, but I can do it. So I think um, that's one of those examples where we say, yeah, I have my true style, but at work, I've got to do it differently or I won't survive. Um, on the flip side, one of the things that I always try to remind students when I'm presenting to them is to be thinking about their careers. Why choose a career if you're using your orange as your, you know, as your least dominant style? Find something in your top two styles. Um, because if you can be in your, you know, do your work in your natural environment, it's a lot easier and takes a lot less work than trying to do your job through your least dominant style. It's not impossible, but it sure is a lot of work, isn't it? But, you know, it's that whole writing with your left hand if you're right hand dominant. It's like not impossible, but I sure it took me longer. I had to concentrate. So, you know, uh, this, these concepts can be used in just about everything. Um, in our day-to-day -day lives. We want to thank you so much, Michael, for doing this presentation for the Disability Rights Committee. We appreciate your time. Thank you, Stuart, for all the time you had spent organizing this, and Teresa. Um, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. And I'm sure Teresa will get those materials out, and if anyone wants to contact Michael, of course. But thanks. That was a great presentation, and we had a lot of great feedback. Very good. Thank, thank you. you. Have a great afternoon, everybody, and it'll be interesting bringing all this back into our, our work and personal lives to see the impact. Maybe we should do a follow-up in a couple of months to see. <laughs> see how you're doing. Thank you, it was really great. I had a lot of fun. Excellent, thank you for your feedback. Thanks, bye. Thanks, Michael. You're welcome, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming. All right. Bye, Teresa. Bye. Great job. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Yeah. I'll get, uh, get those materials to you. Great. Yeah. I, I, I'd say a lot of people will be very interested in, you know, whatever kind of follow up that you have, um, because I had a couple of people private messaging like, "Can we just do this for the rest of the afternoon?" Because <laughs> it is—it's just so fascinating, and and especially the part where you're trying to understand a style that's different from yours, and and boy, there are some things where I was like, "Oh, I get it now." You know, I'm in my fifties, and this, this is like the first time I'm realizing certain things. You know, it's just, whew. So thank yeah. you. You're welcome. It just really kind of puts a, a nice package, not, not to try to label anybody or box them in, but just to understand where they're coming from. And, exactly. Uh, and there's just, like I said, we just scratched the surface. There's so much. And we didn't get really a chance to do group work where we, I like to put people in with their style. So blue sit together and green sit, you know, and then they're like, oh, I do that. You know, it really helps validate the style.
Right. Yeah. Because you normally do what it's like a three or four hour, like a half day thing. Yeah. Half day usually. Okay. All right. Well, you know, maybe um, when we get to the point where we can be back in person again, um, we could see about, you know, doing that as a, you know, obviously a paid program. And um, I would guess that a lot of the people who attended would be interested. And now that we've got this recorded, which makes me <laughs> stop the recording.